Hey guys, today's Monday, the 30th of 2023, and I want to go over the energy dollars, metals, and the uh, indices as a surprise analysis. So about any further delay, let's get into it. As you can see, crude oil <clears throat> on the weekly has a PPS sell signal, and it's getting a little weaker here. It's hovering above the 37.5% uh, low, which is 84. MACD negative. So, uh, soaps are down and you can see on the daily we're just kind of going sideways not really going higher but not really going lower in a range between 89 and 83 so let's see looks like it's getting a little positive here on the daily but we got to at least get above 87 for it to be on the daily get to momo at least to test uh 89 <clears throat> on our bob you can see that our bob sold off uh the week of uh, august 14 and this was a little retrace, but fail, and it's trying to stay above at least 225. But if that fails, your next target will be 202. It looks like it's trying to get a little life here on the weekly, but not looking so far. It's not looking good so far. So, and the range is 239 all the way to 217, just kind of going sideways. So those are the two key levels you want to watch, either a break to the upside or break to the downside, but it'll probably be limited because you're going to probably get a deal with this pivot here, which is 250. So to go long and then just, I mean, uh, you want to scout. That's not bad. At least something is something up here. But if you could at least break above here, test it, you know, I guess from like here, then this is going to be a nice little range to at least you deal with this, deal with that, deal with that. Natural gas. As you can see, <clears throat> change of contract. Interesting. I had these numbers hourly. Uh, 132 kicked in here, and 102 uh, hours, I guess, and change. Whatever notes I had here, I've been having. I did a video tracking the uh, the 1002 high. So you're on a hunt for 1002 in time, and I got these two to show up. And this one kind of played out well with all the other stuff. If you've seen my video on geometry, a lot of things is lining up around this week. Uh, between the 20th to 20, 23rd, around there. And you got this nice little pop with the change of contract. Got this big gap. I'm sure it's going to get filled. But then this other one right here is going to have to get filled also. So, And then we got a lot of stuff in December between time and price. And the daily cycles bottoms out in December. So couple of things we could kind of continue going sideways here lower to december then turn around um or ignore december and just kind of go sideways to higher but so far uh the macd is still positive and the weekly is still positive made a high of what 364 as of right now uh and now dipped up below 347 so keep an eye on that heating oil kind of in a range also 283 all the way to 350 and trying to hover you know trying to stay above that trend line which is that trend line goes way back all the way over here uh, but macd uh, is negative and on the daily it is also negative and this is the range you got so it's one of those things you got to either like break out or just kind of scalp this short until it kicks, kisses here and then maybe uh, see if it bounces off of there or continues going lower. Let's go into the metals and see what the metals is cooking. Uh, the, you know, gold is just consolidating here in the daily between two, uh, 208 all the way to 1964, but it's on the upper range with a MACD negative. But just kind of going sideways. You can see it on the soaps. And the uh, weekly is, is positive, but having a tough time right here at this pivot high of 2021, 2022. I know it hasn't really kissed that yet. Uh, but that's your uh, range up there. that we could break up above there, then the next target would be 2085. So far, MACDs are positive. This looks positive. The soaps. Uh, silver is a little weaker. As you can see, this trend line is just holding it down. It pierces it, but then uh, it fails back in, but then it's not really going lower. So there's no conviction on where it wants to go. 
It doesn't want to go higher, but it doesn't want to go lower. So it just wants to stay put between, uh, you can say, 22 and change. So nothing really exciting here. So you got this nice little pop pulled back. Maybe it looks like on the daily wants to try it again. Got to deal with this trend line, uh, which is uh, 23.56, and then this high of 23.88. Uh, and the MACD on the daily is uh, not positive yet. Uh, copper looks like it's getting Momo now. Uh, you can see it on the daily. EPS buy signal looks like it's breaking above. What's that? Uh, two, uh, 367 and it's at around 369. So if it could stay above there, you might have a fighting chance for this trend line right here. Um, yeah, 347, 382. Yep, yeah, I'm have fighting chance to get up there. MACD is positive, uh, although this is overextended, so you got to be careful for a snapback. This is what a typical snapback will look like, especially when the uh, soaps are very ex extreme. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but so far, yeah, it's looking positive. At least close above 376 and then deal with this trend line. Uh, and then the next one here. So we'll take uh, one day at a time. Platinum, uh, PPS buy signal. And you got to at least close above uh, 935, at least to test uh, 995. Nine, nine, uh, MACD is positive, daily's positive. So it looks like you finally. Been congested here and broke out of this pivot high. So you got a couple of pivots here. You got this one, which is uh, 953 and then 995. So could it happen? Yeah, it could possibly happen. Look at the uh, seasonalities and see what's cooking there. But so far, uh, it's looking good. Interesting that this one looks better than this one on the soaps. And let's uh, look at. Uh, Palladium. This is the one I'm doing a little research. But so far we got that uh 1088 low. Uh things are waking up. MACD is positive. And on the uh, daily, you're in, you're stuck in a range right here between 11.55 and 10.88, and there's a pivot here that could be support if it pulls back. But so far, it's looking positive here on the daily. Let's go um, to the dollar real quick. Dollar still going sideways, hasn't really taken out the high. It's just kind of getting narrow here. A little resistance here at 106.89. But still positive with PPS buy. Uh, you can see the currencies are getting stronger compared to the dollar a little bit. I guess it's pulling back into the well, what I call noise. So when it's here, you, you don't want to trade it. You want to trade it when it's below the bobo bands. Uh, so it's gonna there's not much conviction to push higher. Uh, so we'll see what's gonna happen there with the dollar. Uh, let's go. Um, what did do the ES SP? So interesting. Uh, let's look at the big picture. So, the big picture is we went to the value area high on the uh, ES at 4544 PPS sell signal, it's the 200 SMA and the point of control. Uh, which is uh, 4108 on the monthly. And then we got a MACD negative. Volume is very negative. So it started getting ugly between September and October. And traditionally, September and October are very volatile, negative months. So let's see what November uh, and maybe a Christmas rally uh, may it could play out. We'll see. On the weekly, PPS sell signal kicked in on August the 7th and it bounced, retraced. See, this is a perfect setup for the PPS. It sells, you wait for the rebounds or the, the, the snapback 
and right here, it didn't really, it pierced it a little bit, but from right here, you get your next neg negative candle on the weekly, whatever, however you play it, you go short. Meanwhile, on the MACD, the MACD gave you a better even signal, because right here on the week of August, uh, July the 31st, it crossed over. So it's kind of like a domino effect of, of signals. That's why I like this setup pretty good. You got TD9 right here that kicked in. So TD9 started even earlier, July 10th. All right, so yeah, so be cautious. Things could possibly turn around. And this is the weekly chart right here. The Hekanashi was telling you there's a possible change on August, uh, July the 31st. And MACD was confirming that. Got a PPS sell signal on August 7th. It went down for two weeks, then it snapped back up, kind of went sideways. And then right here, this is where on the next candle. And it would, you know, it could have like gone back up again. You never know, but that's why you put your stop. Uh, but this one played out really well. And you can see that now we at point of control, linear regression channel. So this is a nice little area for an entry. If, you know, my opinion, if you ask me. Uh, and maybe it turns around now and maybe now retest this high of 4636, which could be the Christmas rally. Uh, but you can see that these things are negative and you're smack in the middle here. And on the daily short term, you can tell you're is negative because you're below the cloud. Here you're above the cloud. Point of control below, you know, all the moving averages. And it looks like MACD wants to get positive. So let's see how this week is going to play out. Let's go to the, uh, I wanted to just focus on the ES a lot, but let's look at the YM, the Dow. And the Dow is the same thing. At the linear regression, that was more weaker because it took out the point of control. Now it's at the linear regression channel and it's in the cloud. I believe the ES was in the cloud too. Make sure. Oh no, it wasn't in the cloud. So ES is a little stronger. On the short term, they're both negative, which is the daily. And on the daily, you at the valley. Ooh, what's that? You at the value area low, and even below it, which is thirty two seventy four. Linear regression is pointing down. We gotta wait for the MACD crossover and some positive signals. Uh, but it could push lower. You got some support over here at uh, 3193. You got the uh, 200 right here. And everything is the same here negative volume, everything. So there's nothing positive on the weekly yet, although this looks like it could be support. Uh, let's go into the uh russell russell is the ugliest one out of them all russell took out the cloud on the weekly and this is the monthly you can see they both all look alike with the negative magd negative magd well, it looks as like this is getting a little positive but very oversold from here very oversold and you're kissing the linear regression channel so maybe there could be a snapback a reverse a reversal here not guaranteed but you never know and the macd is already getting positive on the daily but we got to wait for the weekly and so far that's how it's looking here on the russell you can see there's a lot of support over here you got the value area low of 1680 84 and it's below it and there's a pivot low here of like 1642 and it's dancing around there you got this strong level with the cloud of 1704 and lastly the nasdaq which is i think better of the of all of them here it's the the least ugliest one in the queue uh even though in the short term it's still negative 
uh, took out the value area low. A 1458. Some is finding support here, but no positive MACD. The weekly is still negative. Uh, it's strong because it hasn't even kissed the linear regression channel, though. It failed the 50, I mean the 20 SMA. Here's the 50 approaching. So if it pushes a little even lower, this could be a nice little area 1364 because you got this linear regression. Uh, angle right here and you got the uh, 50 SMA uh, but right now it's just kind of finding support here which is interesting I don't see anything there besides this uh, but this is probably even better uh, which is this pivot right here of uh, 1391 but it's it's not that bad but still negative here uh, it hasn't even kissed the point of control on the monthly chart, so it's just finding support right here. But a PPS sell signal, so it's, you know, it's still showing weakness, but not as bad as the other one. So that's the analysis here. Um, but if I was to bet, I would probably go with the Russell, since this is the one that's sold, you know, sold the, the most. All right, so those are other things that I wanted to cover here. So I had some uh, ideas, short ideas and long ideas. So my short idea was uh, LE. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, live cattle. So, so far, uh, now it's starting to play out. As you can see on the MACD, on the monthly, you're getting divergence. So you're getting from here high, you do a high here. You get this other level here of what is that uh 13 and change you get this other high it's on the mark 13th and now this is another high and another high here so lower higher on the monthly still strong the trend is up but if you want to get a nice little turning point over uh, reversal and possibly, you know, come down maybe to the 50. Maybe it's not as much, but, you know, maybe to the 50. I'm not going to say it's going to crash down. Uh, you can see that how this sell-off laid out and then and continue another leg higher. But look at this candle. It's very aggressive. So a lot of people got out or are going short here. And in the weekly, you can see it even better. And on the uh, daily, <clears throat> the live cattle cracked the uh, cloud. The PPS sell signal on uh, October the 19th. And you got this massive sell-off. Hit the linear regression channel, found support. And now it's retracing. So this is where you want to be like, okay, you want to start looking at, you know, seasonality, start looking at other things and see maybe there's a probability where it could retrace and have a failed new high or test the high. And if it fails, if you see any sign of weakness, then wait for that opportunity to short. So it's playing out well. I'm not short yet. I'm just watching it and want to see if it could retest. And I'm looking for a failed new high or even if it pierces it. But then if it closes below 188, I'm going to pounce. Uh, or wait for any weakness. It may not. It may not go all the way up here. It may just want to go down. Hit value area high from here and pull back. But I just wanted to see how it's going to play out on this retrace. So that's that's how I'm waiting for it to play that out. And then the next uh, idea, long idea, was H E. That's lean hog, and that didn't look good. And the reason why I had it here is because it came out of the cloud on the weekly, but look at that. It failed. So this wasn't this is not a good trade. For the long, we could delete that. The next one, I believe, is copper as a long idea. Uh, and you can see that it's just not uh playing playing right. You can see it's just very choppy. Look at the MACD with signals just compressing within the zero line. And finally allowing the daily, you're getting this pop to the 50. I 
I probably bet it's going to fail right there. It's going to have a tough time or maybe push higher. You got to deal with that trend line. So yeah, so this one didn't play out well as a long idea because it's still just kind of consolidating. Uh, palladium is the one that I have for a long idea and that hasn't played out either. It's still hunting for lower price action. Uh, but it's fine because this is the one I'm focusing my research uh, uh, for a long trade. It still hasn't finished. It's not like it's consolidating. It just hasn't finished going lower. You know, 1088, it could, it could probably push lower. So I'm just waiting for that to like establish itself. Uh, ZO, I don't know what ZO is. Oh, oats. Oats as a long. So, yes, yeah, so maybe when I was thinking about this, it was this nice little pop. And now in the cloud, failed. Maybe we could push it. It's holding the 50 right here, SME on the weekly. Maybe we could push here. This would probably be ideally better. Um, let's pop, retrace. So, according to Gann, he says the best entry would be a nice move to the upside, a nice little pullback. Your next opportunity uh, will be somewhere around, it could be here or it could be over here. But it's very risky because, you know, it could just do a, a, a double bottom to test this low. So you could probably catch a falling knife going on here. So it all depends on price action, seasonality, statistics, everything. But so far, it's found the support here. And this could be your wave one, two, going to three. Um, but oats, I have it on my list as a, as a, as a long uh, play. So I'm keeping this one on my radar. I want to see how this plays also. I think that's it. Those are the things I have here. Um, yep, that's it. So those are the, the uh, instruments I'm watching and, uh, palladium. I'm doing a lot of my research on that one. Uh, good trading. Have a good weekend. Uh, good weekend. Good week. I know it's going to be Halloween and all the kids. I got to deal with that this week. Um, tomorrow. And, uh, I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on the dollar, the energy and the metal sector.